Good day to everyone. Today, I'm going to discuss the scientific method of identification, the medical legal aspect of death, and also the changes in the body after death. So under scientific method of identification, we have four. The first one is fingerprinting. The second one is dental identification. Uh, next is identification of skeleton. And last is the identification of blood and blood stain. So under fingerprinting, fingerprinting is considered to be the most uh, valuable method of identification. And it is universally used because the first is there are no two identical fingerprints. So when we say there are no two identical fingerprints, fingerprint shows unlimited and infinite varieties of form. And in fact, the National Forensic Science Technology Center states that no two people have ever been found to have the same fingerprints and, include, and also including the identical twins. It's important to keep in our mind that fingerprints also vary between your own finger fingers. It means that you have a unique prints on each finger. And according also to Solis in 1987, it says that two or more fingerprints may grossly appear to seemingly alike, but under the use of microscope or the magnifying lens, the difference may be proven. And the chances of two fingerprints being the same are calculated to be 1 to 64 billion, which is 10 times the number of fingers existing in the world. So the second one is fingerprints are not changeable. So when we say fingerprints are not changeable, fingerprints are formed in the fetus in a fourth month of pregnancy. And during the latter, of, latter stage of pre pregnancy, as well as the birth or after birth, the pattern uh, enlarges, but no changes takes place in the number and arrangement of friction gauges. So, how to get fingerprints impressions on the dead bodies? So, according to Solis, uh, in case of fresh bodies, the fingers are unclenched and each one is inked individually with the aid of a small rubber ruler. And the paper where the prints will be impressed will be placed in a spoon-shaped piece of wood and slowly or evenly rolled over the pattern. And if the fist is too tightly clenched or masyadong may fit yung pagkaka, ano na mga kamay, pagkakakuyong, so a small incision may be made at the base of the fingers. And the contraction may be also be overcome by dipping the hands in hot water. Or pwede rin na ilubog sa mainit na tubig para medyo lumuwag yung pagkaka-clench. So the second one is if the so-called washerwoman skin is not too marked and the fingerprints of dead bodies recovered shortly from the body of bodies of water or ito yung mga lumubog or nalunod, the fingers may be dried off with towel. So, kung hindi pa masyado or bago pa lang yung pagkakalunod niya, so yung tinatawag natin na washroom woman, pwedeng itong patuyuin gamit yung towel or kung hindi naman is we use uh, glycerin is injected with a siren para yung skin or yung uh, skin ng fingertips is mag yung surface. And also the fingerprints are then taken like the fresh of the body. Same process lang tayo dun sa una. And the third one is if the floater has been in the body of water, ibig sabihin matagal nang nalunod at yung bangkay is nakuha nang mag-float sa um, taas ng tubig or sa dagat or sa dagat or any body of water 
for a long for a longer time and the friction ridges have disappeared the skin of the fingertips is cut away so ika cut away yan so and this uh, area of skin from each finger is placed in a small label test tube and that is containing a uh, formaldehyde solution and if the papillary ridges are still preserved on the outer surface the person taking the print uh, prints place a portion of the skin on his uh, right index uh, finger protected by a rubber gloves and then it that takes the print after inking the fingertip bali yung mismo yung nagte-take ng fingerprints so yung lalagay niya sa kanyang index fingers na, na, na dapat ay naka-glove siya para hindi makuha na din yung fingerprints niya so siya yung magro-roll magro or magi-ink ng fingertips then the same procedure as described may be applied to putrefied or burned bodies according to the circumstances. Same process tayo sa, sa, sa kung ano yung ginawa dito sa pang third, ganyan din yung gagawin, gagawin pag yung uh, body is sunog or natutunaw na. Natutunaw or nalalagnas na. So next is, we have the uh, dental identification. So when we say dental identification, the role of the teeth in the human identification is important because of the following reason. The first one is the possibility of two persons to have the same dentition is quite remote or ibig sabihin is uh, madalang lang or uh, parang wala, walang same dental, dental characteristics ang magkakamuka. So in adult, it has 32 teeth. And each tooth has five surfaces, and some of the teeth may be missing, car use, or with uh, or with filling materials like yung mga may pasta na, may jacket, or even nisa may nakabrace pa jan, di ba? Or yung bago ngayon yung veneer na tinatawag. So with abnormal uh, abnormality in shape and other uh, 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 peculiarities. Yung mga may sungke, ano pa bang other, may mga infected na ah, ngipin, yung mga wisdom tooth natin na mga infected, it's also considered as uh, characteristic of our uh, dent dental. So this also lead to several combination which almost infinite in numbers of dental characteristics. And also... Take note that the shiny and white enamel that covers your teeth is even stronger than bone. Ibig sabihin, yung uh, enamel, white na nakocover sa teeth natin is mas matigas pa sa buto ng tao. And also, take note that the resilient surface is 96% minerals. And the highest percentage of any tissue in your body make it durable or damage resistance, which is damage resistance daw yung ating mga nipin. And the second one, we have the, the enamel of the teeth is the hardest substance of the human body. And it may outlast of all other tissues during uh, putrefactions or physical destruction. So, kahit... Uh, malagnas or yeah, matunaw or mabulok na yung katawan ng isang tao, is yung ma mag stay pa rin doon is yung ating dental. Because our dental, it would last uh, 10, 1 to 10,000 years. So, the third one is, after that, the greater the degree of tissues destruction, the greater it is the importance of the dental characteristics as mean of identifications. We call dahil nga yung mga tissues ng ating katawan is uh, nasira na or natunaw na or nabulok na. So, it means wala na tayong way para ma-identify yung tao. So, yung pinakamabisang um, identification natin is yung kanyang dental characteristics or yung kanyang dental records sa clinic. So, the fourth one is the more recent the anti-mortem records of the persons to be identified, the more reliable it 
is the com is the comparative or exclusionary mode of identification that can be done. So third one, uh, so the next one is the identification of skeleton. But uh, take note class in dental identification. The forensic odontology is the application of dental science to a legal investigation and primar uh, primarily um, involving the identification of a tender by the comparing of dental records to the bite marks left on the victims, which is usually the case of rape, to, rape case, and at the scene, or the identification of human remains based on the dental records. So, okay, the next one, we have the identification of a skeleton. So, identification of skeleton is occasionally, ibig sabihin madalang lang itong ginagamit. So, before a physician is called to examine a dead body, the soft tissues have already disappeared and only the skeletal system remains. And also in examination of bones, the following points can be determined. So it means pag wala na din source kung paano ma-identify yung bangkay, hindi na natin maalaman kung sino siya, it can be, we can use the identification by his dental, dental records or dental characteristics. And also the second one is the skeleton. Dahil ito lang yung nagre-remain, uh, ito lang lang yung natitira sa katawan ng tao after a few months. So, under the uh, identification of skeleton, we have the, uh, the first one is whether the remains are human origin or not. So, paano ba natin malalaman kung yung bangkay ba is a hum human origin? Okay? Siguro by the size or the shape or generally nature of the remains. Especially that the head must be studied if it is um, it is a round or oval shape, the skulls, or it is also less prominent, the lower jaw, or our nasal bones are are present on that skull. It is suggestive a human remains. So malalaman by the skulls kung ito ba ay human origin. So, the second one is whether the remain belong to a single person of na or not. So, paano ba natin malalaman kung yung mga butubang natagpuan doon is sa si isang tao lang ba nagkaling or two or more? So, paano ba gagawin yan? So, first is the layout of the bones on a table in their exact location. It means parang i-reconstruct, buuin yung mga location exact location ng mga buto kasi at the birth um a person it has almost 300 pag pagong silang meron tayong 300 bones of almost 300 but when we are already adult mga nasa 206 na lang yung count ng bones natin so yon pag means pag sumobra sa 206 kung adult man yan it, ibig sabi uh, ibig sabihin is uh, the excess bone or the plurality is considered as the bones is more than one person's yung nagmamayari and however uh, kailangan din natin i-consider yung mga deformities like yung halimbawa may mga taong kulang yung kamay kulang yung daliri walang paa walang kamay and also, huwag natin kalimutan din yung mga sobra yung mga daliri. Yung tinatawag natin na polydactyl sa dactyloscopy. So, the third one, we have what we call the sex. So, paano ba natin malalaman kung babae ba yan or lalaki? So, by the field beast gives the best indication of the sex, particularly the uh, uh, skium or skium pubic index. And take note that for sex ex uh, estimation with the uh, felvix, the skium pubic index is commonly chosen along the greater uh, sciatic 
notch. And this index is percentage value of the pubic length divided by, by the skium length and known that female, female has a greater value than male. So next we have the identification of blood and blood stain. So um, in medical legal importance in the, blood, in the study of blood stain, we have the circumstantial or corroborative evidence against or in favor of the perpetrator of a crime. So, for example, Mr. A was found dead with a deep uh, stab wound on the chest. And then Mr. B was with a kitchen knife uh, in his hand uh, stained, yeah, stained with blood. And then the examination of the weapon showed that the stain was a blood of a human. And it is below on the same group as that of the disease, which are referring to Mr. A. Ibig sabihin, yung blood is tugmang-tugma sa blood na na-examine na dun sa blood, dun sa knife. So, um, this examination to the investigation authorities has a very strong presumptions that Mr. B was the one who committed the crime. So the next one, we have the determination of the cause of the death. So paano ba yan? When the amount of blood is um, blood stain found in the crime scene is um, marami, pag yung na amount ng blood sa crime scene is marami, yeah, maaring sabihin natin na yung pagkamatay ng isang victim is naubo siya, na, siya ng dugo. But if the disease, uh, if the blood is outside the blood vessel, may imply that the cause of the death of a person is hemorrhage. Kapag naman, yung dugo, di ba? Pwede mag, magka-cause ng kanyang pagkamatas. Pagkamatay is hemorrhage. So the, the fourth one we have the or the third one we have the determination of the direction of escape of the victim or the assailant. So paano ba natin malalaman by the pattern or directions of the drop blood sa crime scene pwede natin malaman kung saan ba patungo yung victim saan pa siya tinago or pwede si assailant or si uh, offender kung saan ba siya uh, lumabas, saan ba yung direction niya palabas because of the drops of the blood, by the, uh, pwede ito sa ginamit niyang weapon or maybe may injury din siya or may injury din siya. Okay? Then the for its determination of approximate time uh, the crime was committed. So it means that although there have uh, variations of as to the color or soluble changes as to regard the, the age of the stain, we can only say that when the, there is too much change, it is not very recent. Ibig sabihin kung ma, malaki na or medyo yung color ng blood is malaki na yung pinagbago, halimbawa naging dark na siya, ibig sabihin yung crime is matagal nang nangyari. So, next we have the determination of the place of commission of the crime. And the last one is determination of the presence of certain dis uh, diseases. So, in medical legal cases, the blood and the blood stain material will be object of, of examination in the crime laboratory. And the pointers to consider are the following. So, the first one we have the Determine, determine whether the stain is blood or not. So by um, conducting laboratory examination, hindi natin malaman kung blood ba yan or baka ketchup lang yan or what. So the second one is if the blood, determination whether human blood or not. Pwede din natin malaman by uh, laboratory examination kung yung blood ba yan is human blood or baka galing naman yan sa hayop lang. And the third one is, if human blood, determination of the blood group or blood types, does it belong? Kung saan blood group ba yan? It is a blood type A, type B, type AB, type O. Yan, malalaman din natin dyan. 
So, the, ter- the fourth one is characteristic of the stain and the stain material. Pwede natin malalaman yung age of the stain, color of the stain, and the matter, degree, or condition of the article which have been stained. So, next we have the um, medical legal aspect of that. So, when we say that it is an event in a, in a person which is inevitable. Ibig sabihin, ito yung event sa buhay natin na hindi natin kayang pigilan. Darating at darating sa atin yan. Which is, you are referring to a death. So, you have also different uh, definition of death. The first one is, it is the termination of life. Ibig sabihin, wala nang buhay. And the, for, the second one is, it is the complete cessation of all the vital functions without possible resuscitation. Ibig sabihin, a totally na hindi na nag-functions yung mga vital organs natin. And wala din din chance para ma-revive ang mga yun. And the third one is, it is the irre- uh, irreversible loss of the properties of the living matter. So next, we have the kinds of death. We have three kinds of death actually. We have the somatic death or the clinical death. We have the molecular or the cellular death. Then we have the apparent death or what we also call the state of suspended animations. So first we have the somatic death or the clinical death. So when we say uh, somatic death or clinical death, this is the state of the body in which there is a complete or persistent or continuous cessation of the vital functions of the brain, heart, lungs, which maintain life and health. It, uh, it occurs the moment a physician or the other members of the family declared a person has expired. When we say expired is patay na. And some of the early signs of the death, um, of the death are present. And it, and it is hardly impossible to determine the exact time of death. So, ibig sabihin dito, when somatic death or clinical death, it is yung totally na hindi na nag-function yung mga vital organ natin like yung uh, brain, heart, and lungs. At kadalasan na nagde-declare nito is yung physician o kung sa pasyente ba ito, si physician na madalas na nagde-declare ng death, uh, pagkamatay ng isang uh, pasyente. And the second one is family member. Pag yung stato, isang tao is namatay, na within, kasama niya yung pamilya niya, like yung pinatawag natin na heart attack or yung bangungot na sinasabi natin. So, next we have the different types of uh, somatic or uh, clinical. So, the first one we have the sociological death. When we say sociological death, it is a type of death wherein withdrawal and separation from the patients of others producing a sense of isolation, abandonment, or unvisited, or unvisited, and let, uh, let alone, let alone to die. So, an example niyan, when halimbawa yung isang patient, okay, um, na-diagnose siya with a terminal illness, or, yeah, yung wala nang, wala nang solution, or hindi curable yung kanyang sakit. So, kadalasan, ano bang example nito? Like, cancer, AIDS, yan. Pag nalaman ng isang pasyente yan, minsan, na-isolate niya yung sarili niya. Ibig sabihin, hinihiwalay niya. Okay? Hinihiwalay niya yung sarili niya dahil nga dun sa uh, uri ng sakit niya, like age, di ba? Ina-isolate ng mga yan kasi nakakahawa, which is, yung tinatawag natin sociological death. So, it means um, dahil nga nakakahaw yung sakit niya, pwede yung si doctor or si family member is hindi na siya uh, binibisita. Yan. Yan yung klase ng sociological death. Parang kinoconsider death din dahil ina-isolate siya. Parang uh, inaalis siya sa family member or the society. Dahil nga dun sa illness or determinal illness na meron siya. 
So uh, second one, we have the psychic death. When you say psychic death, it is the condition of death wherein the patient regress or backslide or give up or surrender, accepting death premature and refuses to continue living. So halimbawa, si patient, nalaman niya na may mulabha siyang sakit at hindi na curable at nakakahawa na. So dito dumarating yung parang uh, sumusuko na sila Dahil tanggap na nila yung pagkamatay nila na wala na, wala na chance. So, um, parang ito yung sample ng psychic death. Itong, yung kahit hindi pa, uh, hindi pa siya totally na talagang physically patay, but uh, tinatanggap na yung sarili na parang patay na rin siya dahil yun nga, uh, uh, ilang time or ilang panahon na lang ang meron siya. So, that's, uh, the third one, we have the biological death. When we say biological death, uh, death, it is a type of death that characterized by the absence of cognitive functions or awareness, although uh, artificial support system may be maintained or organs or functioning. So, ano bang example ni biological death? So, ito yung, ta uh, ito yung klase ng um, death na yung nagsusupport na lang sa kanya is yung um, machine or yung ventilator machine. So, it means, um, example nito yung mga brain death, yung brain death na patient or also known as uh, brain stem death. It is when a person is artificially life support with machine and no longer has any brain function. Ibig sabihin, hindi na nagpa-function yung brain. At yung nakaka-survive na lang siya because by the artificial life support of the machines. And this means that they will not reg uh, regain consciousness. Ibig sabihin, di na sila, uh, di na nila mariregain yung consciousness na, di na sila magigising. Or be able to breathe without the support. Ibig sabihin, di na rin sila makakahinga ng sarili lang nila without the support of the uh, machine. And the first one who, whose brain dead is legally confirmed as dead. Ito na yung considered or legally confirmed na natin na dead pag brain dead na yung isang patient. So the third one is uh, physiological death. So take note that sa psychic or sociological death, they are not officially dead but they are considered uh, types of death dahil parang they consider themselves as a dead person dahil nga ina-isolate sila, hinihiwalay sila. And the third one is uh, sumuko na sila na lumaban or, lum or mabu uh, lumaban na may chance pa silang mabuhay. That, that's why they are considered dead. So, sociological and psychic death. So, we have the physiological death. When we say physiological death, it is the uh, type of death when all vital organs cease to function. So, it means uh, when a person's uh, vital organs are no longer functions and the digestive or respiratory systems begin to shut down during the gradual process of dying. So when we say physiological death, it yung totally, okay, hindi na nagpa-functions yung brain, heart, ano pa ba, yung lungs para maka-take ng oxygen. Ito yung tinatawag natin na talagang um, totally death na siya dito sa physiological death. Then, next we have the molecular or the cellular death. When we say molecular or cellular death, uh, these are the cessation or after the cessation of the vital functions of the body, there is still animal life among the individual cells. And after somatic death, of course, there is a death of all individual cells like nerve and brain cells within the body. And this is known as molecular or cellular death. So, its exact uh, occurrence cannot be uh, definitely ascertained because the, its time of occurrence is influenced by several factors like the uh, previous state of health, infections, climate conditions, and cellular nutrition. Example nito is yung uh, human kasi once... We are dead after natin na totally 
mamatay or what we call the psycho uh, physiological death na consider human may take hours to fully die so it means after ma declared ni physician ni physician or ni family member na batay na intenta ng isang tao so it may take hours para ma considered na patay na talaga kasi sometimes di ba sabi nila uh, Okay, kausapin mo pa yan, narinig ka pa yan, kahit hindi na na patay. So, uh, kaya sinasabi yon kasi our cells and organs undergo their time of death and the process takes hours or even days or depending sa the circumstances. Ibig sabihin, yung mga muscles natin, yung mga cells natin, mag undergo pa sila ng, uh, ng their own death. So, ibig sabihin, hindi sila sumasabay. Halimbawa, yung... Uh, pagtigil ng heartbeat natin, ng brain, tsaka yung lungs, it means hindi totally uh, patay na rin yung mga cells natin. So, it takes minutes or an hours or an days para mamatay yung mga uh, muscles or yung mga cells natin sa loob. O yan, para makasindir na fully dead na talaga yung isang tao. So, the third one, we have the apparent death or state of suspended animation. So, paano ba yan? So, this condition is not uh, really death, but merely a transient loss of the vital functions of the body on the account of disease, external stimulus, or other functions of influence. And it may also arise, especially hysteria, ure uh, uremia, or catalepsy, and electric shock. It is important to determine the condition of suspended animation to prevent the premature uh, burial. And there are records of cases wherein a person was pronounced dead and placed in a coffin, but later on, uh, the um, it later on it is angrily rise from it and walk unaided. So the relative have sent that notice and placed a writ near his coffin. So ano ba yan? An example ba yan? So ito yung mga um, conditions na may electrical shock. Pag, nag, pag kasi nagkaroon tayo ng uh, electrical shock, yung tao is uh, titigil yung paghinga niya ng ilang minutes. Then, bago siya babalik ulit sa uh, resurrection ng kanyang, pa, kanyang paghinga. So, yun yung mga parang pagtigil na paghinga. Which means, di ba sabi niya namatay na siya but, uh, but after minutes or ilang hours is nabuhay siya ulit. Uh, may chances na ito or may mga incident na Kinto, which is, ito yung mga tinatawag natin na apparent death or state or suspended animations. Um, example pa niyan is yung coma in a droning person. So, yan. Kadalasan ito yung, halimbawa, naluno yung isang tao. Di ba? Isasagipin siya. So, dito, titigil yung paghinga niya. But after applying um, reso, uh, resultation, of a, down, uh, of a drowning people, pwedeng ma-revive yung kanyang um, paghinga. So, meron din tayo dito yung, pero yung kadalasan na merong apparent dead na tayo is yung mga animals. Yes. Yung mga animals or yung mga mammals, uh, they are famous in pretending to be dead when threatened. So, parang ito yung mga defense mechanism ng ibang mammals yung magpapanggap silang patay. Ito yung tinatawag nilang playing possum or pretending to be dead after defense mechanism to their observer. So next we have the method of detecting the, the cessation of heart actions and circulations. So paano ba nating malalaman kung talagang yung heartbeat natin is hindi na siya nagpapunctions or di na nagsisirculate. Okay? So, we have uh, different uh, ways kung paano natin, uh, methods para malaman yan. So, the first one is the examination of the heart. So, ano ba yung mga examination na, na ginagawa natin sa heart para malaman kung nagsisirculate pa ba yan or hindi na. So, the first one, we have the palpation of the pulse. So, palpation of the peripheral uh, blood vessel may be made in region of the wrist and the neck. So, we have different pulse sa part ng katawan natin. Meron, dito, meron tayo dito sa, sa groan, sa back of the knee, sa ankle, 
sa put, sa saan pa ba? Sa forehead, uh, sa forearms, sa neck, yan, and also sa hands natin, sa left hands natin, meron tayo. So, ito yung kadalasan na chinecheck, yung mga pulse natin. Bakit ba ba chinecheck yung pulse? Para ma-determine or ma-keep nila yung track on how a person pulse changes over a time. And para ma-trace yung track ng mga pulse natin. So, the second one, we have the um, auscultations for the heart, sound, or the precordial area. The rhythmic contraction and the relaxation of the heart is audible through the use of a stethoscope. Yan, yung madalas na typical na ginagamit yung stethoscope para marinig natin yung heartbeat or yung heart sound natin. So, the third one, we have the uh, fluoroscopic examination. Fluoroscopic examination revealed the shadow of the heart in its rhythmic contraction and relax. And Relax and relaxations. The shadow may be enlarged and then the excursion made less visible due to uh, uh, pericardial effusion. So, ito, gumagamit na tayo ng fluoroscopic examination machine. So, the third one we have the, by the use of ECG na tinatawag natin or the electrocardiograph. So, the heartbeat is uh, accompanied accompanied by the passage of electrical charge and through the impulse conducting system of the heart, which may be recorded in the electrocardiograph machine, the electrocardiograph uh, will record the heart beat even it is too weak or too, uh, or too carried by the um, auscultations. And this is the best method of determining the heart action be quiet in practical. So, by the use of ECG machine, pwede na din natin ma-read yung heartbeat natin. Okay? Paano ba yan? Yung parang record, parang papil siya na pahaba, then yung parang may pataas, pababa. Parang ganyan yung uh, record ni electrograph, electrocardiograph. At dito din malalaman kung may abnormal ba yung heartbeat. Yes, paano natin malalaman kung may sakit ba yung tao. Dito natin malalaman sa uh, ECG. So, the next one, examination of um, examination of the peripheral circums, uh, sir, uh, examination of peripheral circulations. We have the, what we call the Magnus test. When we say Magnus test, it is a ligature is applied around the base of the fingers with moderate tightness. So, paano ba yan? Bali, sa fingertip natin, then itatali natin. So, once na parang nag-retain nag yung blood, parang nakulong, di ba? Parang iitin. Ibig sabihin, buhay pa ang isang tao. Pero pag nating changes, kahit na itali mo yan, at nating changes na nangyari for a few minutes, ibig sabihin, patay na yung isang tao. So, the next one is the uh, opening of the small artery. So, pa paano ba natin malalaman? So, the first one, in the leaving, the blood escape na jerk or at a distance. Ibig sabihin, pag naghiwa tayo, di ba yung blood is parang mablis yung um, daloy nito or pinsan parang titlamsik pang ganyan pag buhay yung isang tao. Pero pag patay na, okay, mabagal or minsan walang uh, blood na lumalabas pag patay na isang tao or, wala, or pwede may lalabas kaya lang konti lang at yung daloy niya is mabagal. So, next we have the Ice card test. When we say ice card test, this consists of injection of a solution of fluorescent subcontinuously. And or if a circulation is still present, the D uh, will spread all over the body and the whole skin will be have a greenish yellow discoloration due to fluorescence. So and take note that this test should be applied only with the use of the daylight as the color. It is difficult to appreciate with the use of artificial light. Yung ice, uh, ice card test natin. Dapat ginagawa ito during daylight. daylight. So next, we have the pressure on the fingernails. So paano ba yan? If the pressure is applied uh, on the, our fingernails of the living person, 
Intermittently, there will be a zone of fillness at the site of the application of pressure to become livid on release. And there will be no such changes of the colors if the test is applied to this person. Saan na yan? Pag nag-apply tayo ng pressure dito sa mga fingertips natin, makikita natin na parang may white dito sa dulo. At pag i-release natin is babalik sila sa dating colors. So pag, de, uh, pag patay naman yung isang tao, wala. Walang pababang, wag pabago kahit mag-apply ka pa ng um, pressure. Yan, dyan sa fingertips nila. Nothing changes then. So next we have the Diaphanous test. When you say diaph uh, diaphanous test, uh, these fingers are spread wide and the fingers web are viewed through a strong light. Sa living, uh, in a living, the finger web is suffered red and sa dead is yellow. Paano ba yan? Pag yung kamay natin is uh, uh, nilagay natin sa maliwanag or strong light or yung try nyo maglagay ng flashlight sa kamay natin. So, anong magre-reflect? Pag buhay yung tao, magre-reflect is parang yung parang wave, uh, web, parang yung mga ugat-ugat natin na kulay red. So, pag naman daw patay yung tao, is, uh, yung mag um, ag a naman is color yellow. So, next, we have the um, application of um, heat on the skin. So, if heated material is applied on the skin in the living person, there will be a bleach, uh, blister formation. Congestions and other uh, vital reaction of the injured area will be observed. And if uh, sa pagpatay naman, uh, will not produce true, uh, true blister or no sign of congestions or other vital reactions. So, yun nga, pag nag-apply tayo ng heat material sa isang buhay na tao, okay, as defense mechanism, para magmove yung or di ba magre-react yung body natin or minsan magkaka uh, ano ba to yung parang magkaka blister para magkakalobo or pa ano uh, sinta paltos yung uh, skin natin kasi uh, dead body naman hindi masyadong observe yung uh, blister at hindi siya mag uh, hindi hindi na siya ma, wala na siyang reaction pag nag-applied ng uh, Heat, heated material. So, next we have the palpation of the radial falls with fingers. Paano ba yan? So, when the living person will feel the rhythmic uh, pulsation of the vessel due to the blow of the blood. So, that naman, no pulsation will be observed. Yun yan. Pa, ito mararamdaman naman natin eh, sa fingers natin. Pag nagpapalpit it, di ba? Yung ating mga Pulse dito sa ating fingers. Pero pag pag dead na kamatik, wala na. Hindi na mararamdaman yan. So next, we have the stoppage of the respiration. So when we say stop, uh, stoppage of respiration, like heart action, the cessation of respiration in order to be considered as the sign of death must be continuous, continuous and persistent. And a person can hold his breath for just only a period not longer, three to one half, uh, one half minutes. And in case of electrical shock, yun nga sinasabi natin dun sa um, suspension of animation, respiration may be cease, um, may be cease of sometimes, but may, may be restored by continuous artificial respiration. So next, we have the method of detecting cessation of respiration. Number one is the uh, expose the chest and abdomen and observe the movement of uh, movement during the inspiration or, ex or expirations. So, ma observe natin yan by the movement of our chest or the abdomen. Kung nag tumataas ba yan. Okay? Then, the second one, we have the examination of person with the aid of a stethoscope, which is placed in the face of the anterior aspect of the neck or the heart or you hear sound of the current of the air passing through the uh, trachea, uh, trachea during each phase of respiration or by also use of stethoscope. Pwede natin din nalaman. Then we have the use of mirror test. So, sa mirror test naman, it is the place of cold-looking uh, cold glass. It is held in front of the mouth or, no, uh, or nostril, nostrils 
if there is a dimming of the mirror after a time, there is still respiration. If the dimming of the cold uh, mirror is due to the condi uh, condensation, uh, condition of the warm moist air exhaled from the lungs, it is respiration is still going on. Ordinarily, there is no dimming of the mirror when the subject is dead. So, paano ba yan? Tasting a mirror sa lamin sa bibig natin or dun sa nostril natin. So, paano malalam magpubuhay ng tao? Pag parang nag-moist yung mirror, so, ibig sabihin, mayroon pang respiration na, 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 na nangyayari. Pero pag wala na siya, walang reaction dun sa mirror, walang respiration, walang moist na nangyayari, ibig sabihin, Hatay na yung isang tao. The next, and take note that um, uh, it must not be forgotten that the dimi of the mirror may be due to expulsion of the air from the lungs due to the contractions of the diaphragm in the gore mortis. So next, we have the examination with a feather or cotton fiber. So... Paano ba yan? Placing a fine feather or strip of cotton in the uh, in the front of the leaf or nostril, if there is a movement of the feather or cotton not due to external air, respiration is present. However, this is not a reliable test as the sli uh, slightest movement of the outside hair or nervousness of the observer will move the feather or the cotton fiber. So, paano ba yan? Yung mga feather or yung mga um, um, ano ba? cotton fiber natin is itututok sila sa bibig or ito sa nostril natin. Kasi alam natin, pag humingi nga yung tao, di ba, nagbubukaw siya ng um, carbon dioxide. So, it means natatamahan. Pag may movement na nangyari dun sa feather, ibig sabihin, still may respiration. Pag wala na, it means it's dead. But this uh, this method daw is ano, uh, unreliable siya dahil pwede mag-cause ito no, yung paggalaw ng feather is yung um, hangin natin sa environment natin or yung uh, dahil gumalaw yung feather dahil nga sa nag, uh, nervous or uh, nervous ng taong nagkakandak doon sa ano, observer. Okay? Next, we have the examination with a glass of water. So, it is a place, a glass, half a full of water at the region of the chest. If the surface of the water is smooth and stable, there is no respiration taking place. But if the water or water movement is observed, then respiration is taking place. Pat ba yan? Yung pag nagbigay, um, naglagay tayo ng a glass of water sa itaas ng chest natin, pag, na, pag nakita natin dun sa tubig is pag may movement, okay? Pag move yung nilagay natin ng glass of water, ibig sabihin, may respiration pang nangyayari pag walang movement, any movement, or exa excess movement na nangyayari, ibig sabihin, patay na yung tao. And then we have the wind slow test. When we say uh, wind slow test, there is no movement of the image formed by the reflecting artificial or sunlight on the water or mercury contains in a saucer and placed on the chest or abdomen is respiration is not taking place and the reflections are utilized uh, magnify the movement of the surface of the mercury or water. Next, we have the changes in the body after death or following death. So, ano-ano ba nga ba yan? So, important ito because the changes that occur in the body after the time of death or within the next few minutes or hours are very important to be used, especially in determining that death has taken place in a person's. So, first one, we have what we call the argor mortis or the cooling of the body. So, when we say argor mortis or the cooling of the body, it is the prog uh, progressive fall of the body temperature is, or is one of the most prominent sign of death. After the death, the metabolic, um, metabolic process inside the body ceases. Ceases. And heat production in the body stops and its temperature is lowered gradually to that of the surroundings. And the rate of the cooling of the body is not uniform. And it is roughly during the first two hours after death and the temperature of the body gradually approaches the temperature of the surrounding rate becomes lower. So 
ito yung kapag yung patay yung patay na is um kapag yung patay ng isang tao is unting-unting lumalamig yung bangkay nito so paano ba lumalamig yung yung bangkay nito so we have a different time interval sa cooling ng katawan ng isang bangkay so and take note that the normal body temperature in a living person is 30 for uh, 37 degree Celsius or 98.3% uh, Fahrenheit. But a fun death, kapag sa taon, uh, pagpatay na, sa patay naman, yung temperature niya is gradually decreased. Ibig sabihin, mabilis na bumababa per second yung pagbaba niyan. And the fall of the temperature is 15 to 20 degree Fahrenheit. So, ganun na lang yung kanyang temperature. It, which is, kinoconsidered natin as sign of death. Pag nasa 15 to 20 percent uh, degree Fahrenheit na lang yung kanyang temperature. And as a general rule, uh, kung parehas na yung temperature ng environment tsaka yung katawan ng tao, uh, kinoconsidered natin na patay na ang tao sa loob ng 15 to uh, 12 to 15 hours. Pag pareho na yung um, temperature ng environment or sa loob ng room. Pag same na yung temperature ni, ni environment at ni body or yung bang, uh, nung katawan, ibig sabihin patay na yung tao for almost 12 to 15 hours. Okay? So next we have the changes in the muscles. So when we say changes in the muscles, it is the, after that, there is a complete relaxation of the wool um, muscular system and then term and the entire muscular system is a contractile from three to six uh, contractile to three to six hours after that and the later rigidity or yung paninigas paninigas will set in the secondary relaxations of the muscles will appear just when the composition has set in dahil nga the muscle is completely relaxed na Okay? So, um, dito makikita na ang ulo or yung panga ng tao is nakadraft na or bagsak na kasi nga wala ng muscles na nagsusupport sa kanya para ma-retain siya sa position niya. So, at dito rin makikita yung pagpatay na is kaya yung reason, kaya may nakikita kayo yung bibig niya is nakabuka. Diba? Nakabuka yung big, big Dahil nga, yung muscle is relaxed na. Wala na nagko-control. Para itikom yung bibig na yan. Para mag-support. Okay? And the entire muscular uh, tissue passes into three stages after that. Which is namely, the first one is the stage of primary placidity or the post-mortem muscular irritability. So, it is the stage uh, of muscular uh, change of undead characterize the relaxation of the muscle and the loss of their natural tone or the jaw or the jaw or the head drops down yan sinabi natin and the thro uh, thorax collapses and the limb becomes placid and the uh, splinters relax so kaya ito yung reasons why the dead person may still urinate kaya gikita natin pag yung tao is umihina Okay, or nagbawel na dahil nga wala ng muscles na may, medyo magko-control dun sa movements na yun. And defecate or uh, excrete waste products of the metabolism. Sabi na natin yung pagbabawas. Through the force or the skin. And when muscles are subjected to mechanical or electrical stimuli, the muscle will contract owing to the presence of life of the individual cells. And this state lasts for three to four hours after death. So next we have the next stage, we have the stage of postmortem rigidity. So when we say first uh, stage of postmortem rigidity, it is the stiffening of the muscle body after death due to chemical changes. So within the muscle tissue itself. So, it is developed first in the face or jaw. So, yung una daw titikas is yung mga mukha natin and yung jaws natin. So, yung mga smaller muscles natin, yung unang uh, tumitigas. Followed by uh, rigidity gradually extend 
downwards hanggang pababa, ulo, pababa. So, yan, yan yung involving na yung neck, chest, arms, abdomen, and finally, the legs and the feet. And it, it begins to leave the body and it is disappeared in the same order that is name, uh, made its onset. So, the first, the face and the neck will be again become placid and then the other portions of the body will become leave in the same order that the rigidity develops. So, in warm countries, uh, this stage set in for in set from two to three hours after death. So, yung paninigas is magi start siya after two to three hours na pagkamatay. So, dito na makikita yung stiffening ng katawan, which is magi start siya sa ulo, pababa. At kung lalambot naman, or maalis na yung pag, uh, pagkaka-stiffen uh, niya is mag start ulit sa ulo, pababa din. So, and it is fully developed in the body after 12 hours. Sabi dito, if the in warms country daw, so sa mga maiinit na countries, this stage will set. So, mag uh, start pa lang yung stiffening of the, of the body is after 2 to 3 hours. And it is fully developed in the body after 12 hours. And it will last to 18 to 36 hours. And it is, this appearance is comitant with the onset of the post -refaction. So, And take note that when you say post-mortem rigidity, it is also known as the rigor mortis. Post-mortem rigidity is also known as the rigor mortis. So we have the conditions uh, simulating rigor mortis. So we have the heat stiffening. So when we say heat stiffening, it is a condition characterized by hardening of the muscle due to coagulations of the muscle proteins. When the dead body is exposed to intense heat by the burning of immersions in a hot liquid. So paano ba yan? Pag, uh, Yung ma-observe natin is yung body ng uh, body or yung katawan ng isang tao is um, tumitigas siya dahil um, sa boiled fluid maharing nalunod siya or yeah, na, na, na lumubo siya sa boiling fluid or, some, or sometimes it is a burn or, nas, or nasunog siya. Okay? So, ano pa yung cost ng stiffening? So, the first one, we have this uh, heat stiffening. Anong cost ng heat stif uh, stiffening? Maaring yung isang tao is dala nang nasuno siya. Kaya yun yung cost na bakit tumigas yung katawan or yung bangkay. Or the second one is, um, maaring ito yung uh, nababad sa boiling water. So, the second one, we have the cold stiffening. It is the stiffening of the body may be manifested uh, when the body is frozen. But exposure to warm condition will make such stiffening disappear. So, uh, pag daw yung cold stiffening is um, yung cost daw ng pagtigas o ng isang tao is dahil na froze siya or na frozen siya. But, but once na na-expose uh, na na ito sa warm, uh, warm place or warm things or materials, pwedeng bumalik. Pwedeng maalis yung uh, pagtigas nito at pwedeng lumambot ulit. So, the cold stiffening is, ang cost daw ng, pag, ng cold and stiffening is due to solidification of the fats. Because our one of the elements of our, or yeah, elements or chem minerals in our body is fats. So, when its body is exposed to freezing temperature, is tumitigas din to, nagiging solidified. Okay? We have what we call the cadaveric spasm or the instantaneous rigor. So when we say, when we say cadaveric spasm, it is the stunt, the stimulating of the certain group of muscle which occur immediately at the moment of death. Although it is cause is unknown. Although it is its cause is unknown, it is associated with violent death due to extreme nervous tensions of injury and injury to the central nervous systems, according to Lille in 2014 and Lagoneria in 2010. So, when the findings of the weapon is 
uh, air, pieces of clothing, or weeds on the palms of the hands, and firmly uh, grabs is very important in medical legal in medical legal points to determine whether it is a case of suicide, murder, or homicide. So the person of the presence of weeds held by the hand of a person found in water shows that the victim was live before before disposal. It means may panlalaban pang nangyari kasi nakahawag pa siya sa ng weeds, may cause ng weeds. Ng weeds. So next, what are the um, distinction between rigor mortis and cadaveric spasm? Kasi nga sinabi natin kanina na rigor mortis, it is the stiffening of our body or yung pagtagas ng ating katawan or bangkay. Pagtagas ng katawan or ng bangkay. When you say cadaveric spasm, ito rin yung pagtigas ng group of muscle lang. Pero pag sinabi natin si rigor mortis, may um, level or may sequence, di ba? Yung, or may interval yung pagtigas ng fart ng our body, which is nag-una siya doon sa mga small muscles, which is our head, or our face, and our jaws, pababa. Yun yung, yun yung ano, interval ng pagtigas ng ating katawan. Pag si cadaveric spasm naman daw, it is yung instant yung pagtigas ng group of muscle pag ito yung uh, last um, move na, na kinandak or ginawa ng isang tao. So, paano ba yan? For example, is the in case of suicide, ito. In case of suicide, pag yung ginamit is yung gun or yung barrel, So, paano maka makikita si cadaveric spasm? Cadaveric spasm, makikita yan sa muscles ng kamay. So, kahit, uh, kasi normal na yung, yung rigor mortis eh, um, normal na mangyayari yan sa katawan ng, ng isang patay. But si cadaveric spasm, once na ito yung force na ginamit mo, yung last force na ginamit mo bago siya mat mamatay, ito yung instant na titigas. Ito yung um, unang titigas sa kanya. So, okay. Tinan natin yung pagkakaiba nila. So, in time of appearance, si rigor mortis appears 3 to 6 hours after that. So, mag-start pa lang mag a appear yung stiffening ng body or si, rigor, or si rigor mortis after 3 to 6 hours. While si cadaveric spasm naman, mag a appear yung, pati, uh, yung paninigas is immediately after that. Okay, so sa, ma sa muscle involves naman, si rigor mortis involve lahat yung muscle ng ating katawan which is mag start sa ulo, pababa. So while si cadaveric spasm naman, it is involves only yung muscle or, or group of muscles and are as asymmetrical. Yung mga muscles na ginamit lang niya or yung last force na ginamit lang niya. Yun lang yung mga titigas. Unang maninigas. Okay, we, last, uh, third, we have the occurrence. So, rigor mortis is natural phenomenon. Sabi nga natin, um, talagang mangyayari yan, yung stiffening or pati paninigas ng katawan or ng isang bangkay. So, cadaveric spasm naman, it can or it may not occur or appear on a person at the time of death. Kasi, mag-affer mag lang yung cadaveric spasm pag gumamit ng force ang isang tao bago mamatay. Okay? Halimbawa, pag naglaban. Halimbawa, yung suicide by use of gun. Yan. Makikita yung cadaveric spasm dyan. Or halimbawa, yung pagkalunod. So, parang yung instinct survival ng mga lunod is, di ba, uh, parang nalangoy pa taas. So, makikita yung cadaveric spasm is dito sa mga katawa, uh, sa mga kamay niya. So next, we have the medical legal significance. Rigor mortis may be utilized by a medical jurist to approximately the time of death. So malalaman yan by uh, conducted by our medical jurist. Yun malalaman si rigor mortis. Pero si cadaveric spasm may be useful to determine of the nature of the crimes. Malalaman naman kung ano yung cause ng pagkamatay or yung nature ng, ng pagkamatay ng isang tao. Okay? We have the stage of secondary placidity or secondary relaxation. 
So, when we say uh, secondary, stage of secondary flaccidity, it is a muscular changes characterized by the softness and flaccidity of the muscle in which no longer responses to electrical or mechanical stimuli due to uh, dissolution or of the muscle's proteins that have been previously coagulated during the stage of rigor mortis. And this stage is onset of putrefactions. So, ibig sabihin, once, uh, tandaan natin, na, na yung rigor mortis is, ito yung pagtigas ng bangkay. Or, at ito ay nagsisimula after 2 to 3 hours after death ng isang tao. At nakukompleto naman yung pagtigas ng uh, bangkay is sa loob ng 12 hours. At, si rigor, at also si rigor mortis ay tumatagal ng up to 18 to 36 hours. At pagkatapos ni rigor mortis ay dito naman magsisimula yung pagkabulok ng bangkay. So next we have the what we call the post-mortem lividity. So for post-mortem mortem lividity, it is a uh, purplish discoloration, this one, of the body that is a horse of, of those part of the body which are nearest to the floor. This one, your purple color. And this discoloration is caused by the uh, settling of the blood by gravity in those areas and during the life of the life the blood is under pressure and circulating and after that the pressure falls to zero and the blood begins to settle by gravity so that no matter uh, what the position of the body may be in this position of the, the body which are the lowest will be the areas of the blood will settle and under the most condition, this coloration will be begin to occur after one to two hours after death. So, sa kay post-mortem lividity, so nagsisimula daw magbago ang kulay ng bangkay as early as 30 minutes. At, nagka, nagka, at nakukumpleto naman ito uh, sa loob ng 12 hours naman. So, magkikita yung lividity or post-mortem lividity. mag start siya after after 30 minutes after na mamatay yung isang tao, and then ma, um, makukumpleto naman to after 12 hours. At sa tulong also ni Ligor Mortis, malalaman natin yung time ng death, yung cause of death, and also the position ng isang bangkay. So malalaman din natin dyan kung uh, may movement ba nangyari, nangyari dun sa bangkay. So and take note that Post-mortem lividity is also known as um, cadaveric lividity, post-mortem uh, sagulations, and post-mortem hypostasis, or also, or mas kilala din siya as libor mortis. Okay, pag kulong of the body, ang tawag natin is algor mortis. Pag uh, stiffening of the body, ang tawag natin dyan ay rigor mortis. Pag yung... Um, Discoloration of the body, ang tawag natin dyan ay libor mortis. So, take note that three terms in, ano ha, in changes in our, um, changes in our body after that. So, also take note that if the position of the body is moved during the early stage of formation, it may disappear and develop again in most dependent area in the new position assumed. But if the position of the body has been changed, uh, changed after clotting or the blood has set in or when blood has been already diffused into the tissue of the body, a change of position of the body will not alter the location of the post-mortem lividity. So, and also take note that investigator can uh, press on the skin in the independent region and if the skin blanches, that has uh, probably occurred less than 12 hours. Ibig sabihin, kung may pagbabago pang nangyari yan, pag pinrest ni investigator, yung skin ng, dun sa independent region at may nagbago pa, ibig sabihin, um, less 12 hours pang, na, uh, pang namatay yung uh, tao. Pag 
pag nag-press yung ganyan at nothing changes, ibig sabihin, it's more than 12 hours nang patay yung isang tao. So, we have also types of post-mortem lividity or what we call uh, livor mortis. Um, the first one, we have the hypostatic lividity. So, if the blood merely gravitate, uh, gravitates in the most defendant points of the body but is still um, inside the blood or vessel and still the fluid informs any changes of the position of the body leads the formations of the lividity in another places. And this occurred during the early stage of the formation. So, alimbawa, um, si Bangkai is nandiyan lang at hindi pa matagal yung pagkakamatay nito. Uh, nasa early stage pa lang siya ng kanyang pagkamatay. Pag nilipat mo siya, yung uh, lividity or yung post-mortem lividity, pwede pang lumipat. Kaya minsan, um, kalat-kalat yung uh, post-mortem lividity ng tao dahil nga during at the early stage of formation is nililipat siya. Dito makikita yung movement. So, pag naman dito sa kay diffusion lividity, this the first during the later uh, stage of its inform, uh, formation when the blood has coagulated inside the blood vessel has diffused into tissues of the of the body and the of position will not change the location of the lividity. Ibig sabihin, during ibig, uh, yung nasa more than 3 hours ng patay yung tao, so yung dahil uh, matagal na nga yung uh, time na namatay siya, so yung uh, stickeny or parang namuo na yung dugo sa isang position lang. So, once na nilipat mo na siya, is hindi na mapapalitan yung uh, post-mortem lividity niya. mag na lang siya kung ano yung last position niya. Kahit i-move mo pa siya kasi nga uh, namuo na yung dugo sa ilalim. So, yun explanation natin kay diffusion lividity. So, I think Dito natin i-end yung discussion natin for today. So, I hope you learn. Thank you and God bless.